Hello and welcome back. I have been away a little while because I've been ill, but I apologise and I'm back again. So, what are we doing today? Error handling. We all, we all get issues, right? We all encounter errors, we all need to debug things, and it's a pain. Absolute pain to handle. Um, we're going to go through setting up and using some error monitoring today using Honey Badger, one of our new sponsors. So we're going to, I've just created a brand new account. I've never used Honey Badger before. So you're going to get a relatively raw view on this from someone who's never used Honey Badger, never set it up, and you get to see my reaction and frustrations if there are any. So let's get started. Um, I've signed up, confirmed my email. I skipped the let's get familiar because I, I didn't see the point personally. Um, and I'm jumping straight into select a language. I've started a brand new Laravel project, just installed, just set up. It's blank as can be. It's a brand new Laravel project with nothing in it. I haven't even initialized a Git repository. So we're going to choose Laravel. And we're going to install the package. So while that does its magic with my Welsh internet connection, we're going to have a look through here. Add Honey Badger reporting to the exception handler for earlier versions. Do this. Okay, cool. Let's go and have a look at our exception handler. Exceptions handler. I'm going to zoom a little bit and just kind of clear this out. Make it readable for me. Don't report. Don't flash. Register. And what we're looking for is a the report method. Parent report. We could still do that. If bound, we can do that. Ignore this. Why is that complaining? Don't need to return it because it is a void method. That's good. This should report. E. E. Awesome. That is set up, a few little amendments, but nothing major. And then this. So far, so good. Relatively easy. Happy badgering. Excellent. I love the personal touch. It's installed, you could deploy, generate a test exception for you. Go have a look. This is an example from Honey Badger, Backtrace, local on Steve's Mac, client, tags, only one notice, affected users, none, host names. Cool. You could switch between, oh, wow, yeah, <laughs> that's much nicer. Um, okay, cool. Context, breadcrumbs. Okay, environment, interesting. Application environment. Cool, client library. History. Yeah, this is, this is pretty good. Slightly biased, because they're a sponsor, but yeah, they're good. Um, and resolved, I can resolve that. Nice and simple project, my project. Actions, settings. I can connect all sorts of cool stuff, that's handy. API keys, source maps. I'm enjoying it. This is actually, so my biggest problem with error monitoring in the past has been 
you always default to Sentry because it's what you're used to. But let me just play that. It's I've always found Sentry to be a bit not as good. It's a bit too too much for me personally. Like. They're trying to focus on too much at once. So it's hard to find focus. So what we're going to do, we're going to test out sending our own exceptions. So let's create one first, perhaps. So A, clear that screen. So we're going to say PHP artisan make Exception, test exception. Ooh. Silly Steve, silly Steve. Okay, so. We are gonna throw a new test exception. where the message is going to be. Oops. Something went Ooh. wrong. The previous code, we're going to just do uh, HTTP And also the error. We're going to set it to a 500. So we can really do with that one. So if we just a serve, start the server. Oops, something went wrong. Let's go have a look. Test exception. Okay, so this one's not mine. Did it take a while to come through, maybe? Let's have a look. Sort by newest first. What'd that do? Pause live updates. Okay, so there's live updating, which is kind of cool. Let's come back to here and let's throw it a couple of times, see if it comes through. Check in. Oh, what are these? Check and allow you to monitor jobs and services by pinging a honey badger periodically. If you ever stop checking in, honey badger will alert you. It sounds cool. Well, what does that say? Um, you have five remaining in your plan. Okay, well, I can create one. We can create a test, schedule, cron. Let's go do that. Time zone, grace period. Oh, okay, so I need to be simple. I need simple. Report period every five minutes. Save changes. That's not filled in. Have a look. Hit the web endpoint. So I need to do something with this. So let's have a look at that. Let's set up a little command to run on a schedule, shall we? So A make command honey badger and this is called a check-in so we're going to create a little check-in command so console commands honey badger check-in we've got this 
final class. We can just say honey badger check in. Send a check in ping to the honey badger API. And this returns an integer. Turn command success. So, how is this built in? It's got an identifier. So we're going to need to kind of configure that ideally. So over in config services, we can scroll down, create a new instance. We can say honey badger, and we are going to pass through the check-in identifier from the EMV, and we're going to say honey. Badger check in. So we can go add that in our EMV. I will be regenerating that API key, so don't worry, everyone. It will be regenerated. This is a test account, it's not been set up completely. So brace yourself. So I've got a honey badger check in now over here. I can just do a HTTP. We're going to go really simple here. Just a standard GET request from the looks of it. Um, got to set a timeout. I'll do 15 seconds. Anything longer than 15 seconds is most likely going to be having issues. I'm just going to ping that straight in there. And we're just going to do a get request where the URL is config services dot honey badger dot check in. Go double check the naming. Yep, all looking good. This is going to flow automatically and do that. So what I want to do is wrap this in a try catch. We're going to catch whatever throwable comes back as an exception. And we will throw our own exception. We're going to make an exception. Honey, badger. Check in failed exception. And then here we will throw a new check in failed exception where the message is failed to send check in to honey badger. And then the previous can just be the exception. That, let's check. So, a honey badger check in. Are we getting it? Last scene, test is supporting. Amazing, it worked. I can check in. That's cool. Errors. My errors still not come. I don't know whether it's a environment thing. So let's go and have a look. If I change the environment to production, restart my PHP server. Die again. That, I swear that's not meant to look like that. Um, oh. 
Why are you not reporting? There's a reason this isn't reporting. There's got to be. And we've got the one project, one error notification, can receive the error notification within the last hour. Not resolved, not ignored. It isn't coming through. Let's get a look at the documentation. This is quite useful to think about. So, frequently asked questions, ignoring sensitive data, troubleshooting. If no errors reported, the API is going to report data set to false. Page not found. Okay, so let's go have a look at our exception handler again. So if Honey Badger is bound, then report that and do this. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just dive them on a test to make sure that we are actually reaching this point. This is probably the limit of my debugging. So we are reaching that point. Let's swap this over. I don't like the way that works. Honey Badger equals, I, can't, I don't have access to app there, do I? I'll resolve it this way. Try and dump on my honey badger here. I do have it. So I should, in theory, be able to. No, not that. That's not what I want. Can I? I can notify. And the throwable is the exception. The request is the request. No additional params needed. So let's dine dump on that actually calling in case anything happens. It was sent. We got it. So there must have been something wrong with the code or resolving it out of the container is all I can think of there, which is interesting. However, it's taken a long time. It does sit in the way a little bit. I wonder if that's because it's local, five of them. Undefined variable E. My bad. I probably went through a loop of, ah, I can't report this. Okay, cool. We got somewhere. We got somewhere. It's coming through. We got six of them. Error. Undefined variable E. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm causing my own errors while trying to check errors. Typical. So let's go have a look at this. Yeah, we've got Safari. That's all good. Notices, we've got eight. Oops. Go look at the occurrence. Today. Stack trace, full back trace. No context. Parameters were sent through. Root was matched. All looking good. That's the CSRF token, by the way, nothing else, I believe. Yeah. So 
element server, HTTP one. I really wish I could get HTTP two, two uh, HTTP two running locally. It'd be so much nicer. Um, okay, cool. So that's actually really easy to start with, right? Getting started with error monitoring is quite easy. We've got check-ins. Test is missing. I know, so I'm not actually running it. So now, if I just kind of check in. This page isn't real time, which is fine. Test is there. Deployments. Cool. Reports. That is useful. Error volume, unresolved errors. Uptime statistics, error volume by user. So this is actually quite nice. Let's resolve that. Come back to my project. Resolve that. Just resolve it all. So let's say we have a more complicated example. Um, model not found, for example. A, a common one that we might regularly see. So here's SQLite. We're going to do it that way. Um, I'm just going to migrate the database. Yep, we're all good. We're all good. And we're just going to create a simple API endpoint. It's not going to be my typical approach to an API. It's just going to be for the purpose of this. Let's clean out this. I don't, I don't like having that in there. It's annoying me. It annoys me all the time. So let's say root get users User, ah, user name show. And for this, we're just going to do a quick request, request, user, user. And this is going to just going to return a user. It's, this is not how I write APIs, clearly, but it is going to be somewhat useful. So if I come over to here and we go to API users one, or if four not found, there's no model, there's no one's there. That's good. What do you say about monitoring? I don't need to read that. Page not found in the documentation. That's under support and troubleshooting. Something went wrong there. Not too sure what it could be. Oops, something went wrong. I resolved that a while ago. Hmm. So it's like the not found isn't being reported. So root model binding. So instead what we'd do We're going to do this. We're just going to do it. Query find or fail where the ID is the ID passed in. Restart the server in case it's caught issues there. Nothing showing up yet. Everything should be okay at this point. Could it be something to do with that? Hey, what we're doing warp, which be quicker. Um, we're just going to full screen it. Clear that, we're just going to do that. Is it reporting? So is it set up to not report certain things, perhaps? 
that that could be it. Let's go have a look. Uh, da, da, da. Error grouping. Anatomy. Understand all of that. Integrations. Like escalation throttling filters is resolved. Custom formatters. Hmm. Laravel integration, adding context. Okay, so you can do context. That's con- oh, there's already a there's already a command. I didn't even have to create it. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, da, 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 da. Interesting. Interesting. Using it as a logger. Perhaps it's not seeing the model not found as an exception. That's the only thing I can think of here. So if that is the case, let's test this theory. Break out of this. So user is there. Let's try. Then we're going to catch the exception. Let's throw a new. We'll use test exception again. Could not identify a user with ID of the previous exception code. A while after. Vicious response. Not found. Good, looking good. What the imports. And then we'll just return user. Restart the server and see what happens. Wait a minute, I see what's going on. There we go. <coughs> Wrong URL. <laughs> it happens to all of us. Okay, so we have got it. Cannot identify user with idea of one. So now if I go back and just undo all of those changes. That see if it does report it. Let's try it again. Not found. So I should have noticed from this, really. Is it going to show up though? That is the question. Does it report on model not found on 404s? Apparently not. I suppose it isn't technically an exception. It is just uh, not found. So that that's understandable. So what else could we check? What else could we do? Um, let's go look at the documentation. So you can use it as a log driver. That's kind of cool. 
could be useful. Uh, config logging. Let's go add honey badger to the log. And let's go check that out. So, channels, 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 channels. Come back to EMV and set the logging log channel on the badger. And let's go back to web. And instead of saying exception here, we are going to log info. The message we're going to send is test honey badger log. Context is a request. And now if we just come back to here, Ooh, type of array. So we're getting stuff. Got a log. Log handler. That's that's cool. It show yeah, you, know, you can split them out. Hello, Giresh. How are you doing? Log level, log channel, environment, client library. That is useful. I wonder what other use cases there are for it, though. I suppose you could attach something around the same time. That's cool. That is actually pretty cool. I like that. I do like that. Um, DI resolution. It's, I don't like the way that works. I wonder if it can be injected. Let's go look at the uh, exception handler again. Go look at the constructor. Container. Mm. I suppose, if need be, I could, I don't know, private, read-only, honey badger, honey badger. And then pull in the container. as well as this. Let's see if I could just add that on. Remove this. And then when I get down to here, that should be bounded because it'll fail otherwise. So this can be a, that. Remove that and say, this honey badger notify. Do that refactor, put that back to E. Let's see what happens. API users. Okay, so no issues there. It's not causing any errors. Hmm. Go back to the web, and we're just going to throw a new exception. Make sure it still works. That's there. Uh, it still works, so it can be injected. I, I do prefer that approach. Uh, obviously, I think you can use a facade, which would be, yeah. You know, 
No, not that one. Uh, Honey Badger. Which one is it? This one. The Honey Badger facade and notify. I mean, you can obviously do it this way and skip the injection, but it, it does all depend how you prefer to write your code. So, uh, I could, yeah, you could clean this up quite a lot. I don't need any of that. I can just drop that, come down, and I can simplify this. If it should report, doing the check to see if it's bound makes some sense, but set up your set it up properly, and you're good to go. We get it. So there's a couple of different ways that you can set this up. There's a couple of extra things that you could do, like check-ins to say, you know, yep, my app is still up. It is still running. I can do uptime checks. Uh, I'm not going to do it because it's local service. So it's not really going to access it. But check-ins is an alternative approach. You can use it for logging. Um, I wouldn't say it's something that I'd use specifically for logging, but logging additional information at certain points could be quite useful to go along with any errors that might be occurring. So yeah, that's that's Honey Badger. That's quite easy to get set up and running. Um, you can pass whatever sort of exception you need to. You create your own custom exceptions. Um, I do wonder what would happen if I threw a validation exception. Which one is it? Is it this one? Yeah, with messages. So the messages I want to send across is, I don't know, foobar, for example. I've still not gotten used to the special characters on my keyboard yet. Um, come over to here. Oh, wait. Come back. Can't open. Hmm. That is strange. What could have possibly gone wrong? Have I broken to something? No. I've not broken anything. Come back. Still can't open the page. It doesn't like this for some reason that's strange it doesn't like the validation exception being thrown in here um, not sure why something to play with though definitely something to play with in terms of what else you could do let's get the specific general integration guide handling service errors using it as a logger it's still somewhat the same um you can add in context custom notification adding context so let's say on the handler, notify, let's say, uh, I need Badger, context, key, IP, value,
let's say we add the IP of the context. Um, so new test exception test. Come back to be fresh. All good. Context, we've got the IP address. So we can pass that additional information through if we need to. Um, let's say, what does this return? Returns of a porter. So we can chain it. So we can do things like we can really customize this. Go make sure that is still in there. Come back. Resolve some of these. 11 minutes old. Resolve, resolve, resolve. Let's clear, clear it out so we can actually work with it a little bit more. Here we go. Now the context app version is null. So there's there's a lot that we could actually do with this. We could start actually stop making typos to start with. We could pass through quite a lot of information. Um, oh, I can't remember the command now. I'll Google it. Live Googling. Uh, git get hash version, get the short git version hash. I can never remember it. Let's double check this. Obviously, I'm going to have to uh, initialize the git repo first. So we can do something like that. Um, let's say we can then start to do this using the process facade. We could run um, the command we want to run is this. We just want to get the output, for example. So. Run that again. Context, git version, got the git version. That's useful. Um, there's so much stuff that we could add to this. Um, I right, let's say, um, we want to get the Laravel version as well. We want to say key is Laravel value is application version. Yeah, you can start to add contextual information, context, kind of in the name, around your error reporting and say, okay, so it's coming from this IP, this version of the release, this Laravel version, you could start adding that context to, to really get the most out of error reporting itself. Uh, what else can you do? You can add a breadcrumb, do a raw notification. So let's have a look at like a breadcrumb. So, Message 
the test for oh, so Laravel news stream category is going to be live stream. Metadata is going to be me. Let's test it again and see what happens. Breadcrumbs, lava new stream, steam a doodle. Nice. See, there's so much that you can actually do to kind of add some context, add some information, actually enrich your error reporting. And, you know, this is, I saw those arguments, this is just a quick example. I've spent 45, 46 minutes going through this. But already you can see how you could get so much value out of using something like this. So, yeah, if you've got any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. You know, it took me a while to kind of understand part of it. Oh, good question. Why use Honey Badger versus Sentry? So, don't get me wrong. I've used Sentry a lot in the past, and this is my first time using Honey Badger. But in the last 40 odd minutes, I've been able to do more and customize and add value to my error reporting through Honey Badger more than what I could if I was using Sentry. I can add context. I can customize the implementation really easily. I can add check-ins. I can do, um, oh, oh, what do they call it? Um, uptime checks, check-ins. I can look at some reports. Um, Cool if you could do custom reporting, but that might be pushing it, you know, reporting based on context. So you could see how many errors were reported per context of action. Let's say I had the context of Git version. Reporting across Git versions would be cool. Um, but I've been able to do more. I understand the dashboard a lot clearer using Honey Badger personally. Um, Sentry just feels like it's trying to do everything all on that one screen. And it's just like, wow, I don't need to see that. I'm going elsewhere. Um, simple, straightforward, and it shows you exactly what you need. That is why I, I personally use Honey Badger over Sentry just for that. The fact that I can actually use it. There's nothing worse than being overwhelmed when you're trying to get that information out of your error logs or your exceptions. It's a pain. So, yeah, that is why I do it. Um, so thanks for tuning in. That was a lot of fun. Um, I definitely think I'm going to be using Honey Badger a lot more in the future. Uh, I hope you do too. There is a link down below to sign up for Honey Badger. It is a Lava News affiliate um, because we are somewhat partnered with them. You know, got to be honest about that one, of course. But I'm impressed. Yeah, I I intended to come on, do this stream, and tell you how great Honey Badger is from a partnership perspective. But it's actually really good from a from a development perspective and actually using it. So I'm quite happy. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest about how good the pro the product is. I definitely think there's some polishing to be done on the documentation. But other than that, the product is great. Love it. So thank you for tuning in. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe for whatever's coming next. I'm not too sure yet. If you've got ideas, let us know on Twitter. Let us know on YouTube. Let us know however you can. Let us know what you'd like to see on a live stream, and we can jump into that. But that was setting up error monitoring using Honey Badger, and that was a lot of fun. Um, I'm already getting ideas of how I could work with Honey Badger to get 
more value out of any exceptions and errors going on in my application. So I'm looking forward to seeing what I can do off screen. So thank you. Enjoy. And let us know if you use it. Have a good day. Thank you. Goodbye.